inclement weather. We'll try to move the program along quite speedily so that we can complete in good time so we can get you off the roads as soon as possible. Because based on the Met Service announcements, this is expected to last for a little while. The rain is welcome, but we, we regret that it has affected the attendance here this evening. So the, the launch of the, I'm Janice Hendon, as you can see here on this program, Director of Marketing here at MSBM. And I'm, I'll be the one to, to lead us through this program <coughs> this evening. The, the launch of the UEVC Venture Competition is a special event in the life of the, the, the wider UE, and of course, especially for MSBM. It, it marks for us the beginning of such adventure. Well, it's a, the formal process of designing, coming up with new ideas, discovery, innovation, disruption, all of that. And of course, it also marks mm -hmm. for us the renewal of the partnerships that we have with so many of our private sector organizations. And this evening, I want to just acknowledge the sponsors. Mr. Michael William will, co will come up later and do the formal welcome, but I want to, at the very outset, establish our sincere appreciation for the ways in which we've gotten a collaboration with our sponsors, those who have been with us before and those who are new, and I'll just call now the names of the sponsors, the sponsoring companies, and Mr. Williams will, will give more detailed welcome and, and acknowledgement. But we have, of course, the Vincent Hosang Family Foundation. Vincent Hosang, as you perhaps know, is the benefactor of this, this competition, and we, we are always very grateful for the partnership. <laughs> Thanks. The Joan Duncan Foundation, an Ulster by now. They have been with us for about five years. Um, New Biz, the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority, and we were thankful for them coming on board. <laughs> Development Bank of Jamaica, the Mona Business Support Services, Ingenuity, and we have this year also the Jamaica Biscuit Company. So we're always grateful for the partnerships. And um, in, in fact, the, the, the UAE is about to embark on a new strategic focus, the AAA plan, they call it. And one of the areas that they have established in terms of key performance indicators and initiatives is the number of spin-off companies that come out of the university. And this competition, in fact, is one of the ways in which the, the university hopes to achieve it. So there is great importance placed on the competition, and we place great importance on it as well. We've had great success over the years, and we are sure that this year, again, we'll have great success. So without further ado, I'll invite Mr. Michael Williams, who is the acting ED for the MSBM, to give the formal welcome. Thank you, Jennings. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you all. Let me welcome you all on behalf of the MSBM family, the board of directors, the management, and the staff. Welcome to Janice Julian, Marketing and Public Relations Manager of the Vincent Osam Family Foundation. I, I assume you brought the rain with you from the States. <laughs> Twice in a row. Twice in a row, yes. Uh, please extend our sincere thanks to the Honorable Dr. Vincent Osang for hosting our students. I think it was in August, yes. He gave them a wonderful vacation. Uh, so, and on behalf of the students, I'd like to extend thanks, and please extend thanks to him and his daughter uh, for us. Welcome to Mrs. Patricia Sutherland, Chairman for Joan Duncan Foundation. And, uh, the foundation has assisted students at MSBM in various levels of activity. I can think in terms of the MSC accounting program, and because uh, I see MSC accounting student here, John Duncan um, scholarship, but the foundation and the JMBM group has provided millions, millions of dollars in scholarship for undergraduate students and for graduate students. And we like to thank the foundation and thank the JMM group. And they're celebrating 25 years this year, so give them a round of applause. 
So, welcome to the Director General of Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority. I don't know if you were at the board meeting, the last board meeting, I already had a board meeting from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30. <laughs> uh, Mr. William Singh, uh, welcome on board, and we thank you for partnership uh, with us. And we look for to see you next year and the other year and the other year. Okay? From the Development Bank of Jamaica, Ms. Pauline Nelson, welcome to you. From Mona Business Support Services, Dr. Sharon Smith. Mr. Williams, another Williams from Ingenuity. I don't know if anyone is here from Jamaica Biscuit Company. Can you just wave your hand? Let me see. Anyone is here from representing? No? Um, but we thank you uh, all. Since we have been waiting so long, I'll be brief. A warm welcome to all the mentors, the judges, staff members, and students. And students, it is a wonderful experience. There are rewards, there are cash rewards, but the benefit of being part of a competition like this is reward enough, especially when later on you start your business. As was said before, it's better to have a 1% of a billion dollars than a million, 100% of a million dollars. Welcome to you all, and thank you for fighting the rain, and I wish you a safe journey home. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. He mentioned Mrs. Sutherland, but she's not here yet. Who we have with us is the distinguished Kim Mayer, who is the CEO of the Joan Duncan <coughs> Foundation. So welcome to Kim, who is representing, I think Patricia is on her way, but um, Kim is with us, and with Kim also Patricia Valentine, who's a part of the JMMB team. So we extend welcome to both of you as well. <laughs> Thank you. At this point, we will have Mr. Douglas Linder, who is the advisor for the competition. He will come and just give us an overview of the competition. All right, thank you very much, um, Jan, and again, welcome to our um, friends and I wouldn't say um, partners or sponsors anymore, I'd say family members um, because I think we've established a, a deep and long-lasting relationship that has been beneficial over the last couple of years. You know, as we come here every, every year to launch um, this segment of the program, um, it, it is it's a very special time and why it is extraordinary is because of the impact that this program has had on students. And you're going to hear a little bit about it um, from the students themselves in a, in a minute or two. Um, I know Janice is, is signaling me here, but I don't, I don't read lips very well. Yeah, so <laughs> you can come and tell me. Yeah, I'll tell you. Oh. Right. So I think I don't show the rain or the light, but I misread. And so we'll actually ask Janice Julian to give greetings before Dougie. Right does his overview. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just give the overview and then I ask Janice to come afterwards. Yeah. You know, we're entrepreneurs, that's how we do it here. You know, we roll with the punches. Rainfall, we have the event, we push ahead, right? So, you know, they, I, I'm gonna give an overview of the program, um, but in the last seven years, the program has impacted over 500 young University of the West Indies students. And that, that's something that I think we should have a, a round of applause. And Im importantly, what we reinforce year after year, the competition is really just a catalyst. We're not interested in, in who really wins the competition. We're really interested in who is there for the long haul. And as I sat here beside Nicole Morgan, our, our deputy DGS at Civil Aviation Authority, I thought about, just off the top of my head, 10 student groups who have launched businesses and have started just over the last three years. All of our, s our marketing material tonight is done by C8 Media, which is one of our um, alumni. And we have O'Shane from uh, last year, My Lending Angel. We have our team, um, Rashidi Alert, 
We have educators who are doing um, some phenomenal things um, with private sector in Jamaica. So you'll hear more. But let's take a, a quick look at the competition. This is Oshain um, from last year. And these are just a few of our winners who have come from a very diverse group, whether it's agribusiness, it's um, gaming, it's um, uh, microfinance and, 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 and the food industry. The Vincent Hosang um, competition allows members of the uni university community to get engaged in entrepreneurial activity and the overall program of which a competition is only one piece really supports the wider university community, both students and faculty. And it is something that we, we, we like to remind of because the program in its full breadth supports faculty members who have um, uh, 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 commercial um, ready type ideas to get funding and support from the, uh, the Vincent Hosang uh, program. So it's not just for the students. Uh, we, we use primarily a virtual incubation model. So we don't invest so much in the block and steel, but we try to bring all the partners together, support our mentors. We connect um, with the PSOJ, with the DBJ, and so on to deliver value to our participants through tech um, support and coaching, mentorship, uh, and facilitating a lot of external input. In terms of the competition itself, we pull on resources across a wider university. And whether it's from the New Ventures and Entrepreneurship course in the business school to the CBMIS uh, program, and I see so we have um, Dr. Mansing here from um, the computing department. Uh, whether we come from the MBM program, from biotech, from uh, computing and media, we go, it's a university-wide program. And this year, we have on board a full-time coordinator who you'll meet at later, Ashley Rose Davis, who has the distinct mandate to not only build out the competition across the university, but also the wider Vincent Hosang support program. We're going to be targeting in a lot more deliberate way our faculty members, because there are some interesting things that are being done by faculty members in conjunction with students. But through our venture competition, we're able to offer the opportunity for students to go to an international competition or what we call the other winners who don't win and go to an international competition to benefit from the support of the overall program. Because ultimately, commercialization success is what we're going for at the University of West Indies. In terms of our timetable, um, our launch is tonight. Um, applications close on October 18th. And what's interesting year after year uh, is once that buzz gets around, the application numbers go up. Last year we had over 20 applicants and with the work that we're doing, we're expecting, we have set a target of 20 teams last year we had um, coming. We set a target of 30 plus teams to be a part of the program this year from a wider um, group of faculty um, representatives. Uh, during the period October 21st to 30th, uh, we'll go, we'll do the mentor assignment and we'll also have our boot camps, um, which will focus on business model um, development and business plan development. Our competition finals, and this is a new part of our program this year, will have its first staging in November 24th, on November 24th, where we will have the top six teams. Usually what we do is that the following day, the top six teams compete and we choose a winner. This year, what we're doing is we're going to allow for a six week period for those top six teams to do further market validation and development with their mentors. So when they present six weeks later, they're going to be an an ad at an advanced value added stage. So the competition um, grand finals will be in January 2018, and as usual, we pull on, this is a, is a partnership between um, our partners in the government, academia, and private sector. And a large part of our judging panel comes from the investor community. The international competition that we 
participate in, which is a national business model competition, will take place sometime between uh, late February, early April, and the winners of that competition uh, participate in the international business model competition, which takes place late April, early May. In terms of our our program for um, 2017, we're moving. I, I presented this last year, but there's a uh, there the uh, the big focus is to move towards bridging that divide between idea and implementation in a commercialization process, and we're deepening the relationship with the mentors beyond the competition date for those who are interested in being a part of the program going forward. We are emphasizing students having market-led and sound business models. And what does that mean effectively? Spending a lot more time in the marketplace, speaking to the market and understanding what assumptions are truly validated from which assumptions are not. Again, we'll continue to have our finance and accounting mentors as a strong part of our program. And the post-competition support, as I mentioned um, earlier, is, is, is going to be um, benefiting from increased focus. The Joan Duncan Award for Corporate Social Responsibility, again, is an important part of our feature, uh, feature part of our program um, this year. And the winning team will be able to make a donation to that charity of their choice. Our rules in summary, we we'll focus on startup or early stage ventures, student involvement, it has to be a student-led team um, facilitated by mentors. It can be a program, uh, 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 an opportunity or idea that has involvement of students outside of the university campus, um, whether it's um, from uh, the private sector or from another university. But in competition, it will only be the U.S. students that are allowed to participate in the competition itself. The external shareholding in the venture must not be greater than 25% as well. We won't be accepting late submissions, and the number one constituent really is commitment, the commitment of the team members uh, to the idea. What are some of our benefits of participation? The team prizes, first place gets 300,000, but there will be a number of other incentive, cash incentive prizes that will be announced as we go forward. Our second prize, 200,000, third prize, 150,000, and we have a number of sectional prizes which includes the Joe Duncan uh, Foundation Corporate Social Responsibility um, donation to a, a charity of choice. But after, I, I, I share this all every year, year over year, whether it's the U.S. students, UTEC students, or NCU students. Whether you win a million dollars, two million dollars, U.S. or Jamaican, money runs out. And I'm sure Neville, who is one of our alumni, one of our competition winners, who is here this evening, can tell you, having won a million dollars in the national business model competition, it was, a, it was an important part of the encouragement of, of moving forward. But fundamentally, it is the network of individuals that you meet, it's exposure of presenting to investors that builds the individual's capacity to be an entrepreneur moving forward. And I invite you to have a conversation with Neville, to have a conversation with O'Shane um, and some of our other participants here tonight. The technical support that you're able to benefit from is significant. Of course, the networking, as I'd mentioned earlier, and the overall exposure. Again, it's adv advancing the opportunity for commercialization for student-led ideas. Our 2016 champion was O'Shane, and you're gonna hear from him very shortly. Um, we thank you for your continued support. The program continues to grow from strength to strength, and we look forward to an exciting year for 2017, 2018. Thank you. Thank you.
you very much, Dougie. So that was in a nutshell, but it, um, it's a lot of moving parts, many people who are involved, and we really have to give credit to the, the support we've had over the years for the, the involvement of the faculties. And this evening, he mentioned some, but I just want to acknowledge we have Dr. Mansing and Dr. Dwight Robinson. Thank you for coming. And this, for him, will be the first time. And the, the reports I have from the meetings had with him, much enthusiasm, and we really appreciate that. So we, we have to give such credit to the, the lecturers who mobilize the students and become mentors for them the private sector engagement, people who themselves come and become mentors and judges, people who conduct the boot camp sessions. So it's, it's really a great collaboration, and we are very fortunate to be the beneficiary of that. So that was in a nutshell, but it's really a lot of moving parts, a lot of people, a lot of time, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But in the end, it's really something that we are proud of. So at this moment, let me welcome Janice Julian, freshly off the plane who is here once again to support us, to represent the Hosang family. And she will speak to us now, bring greetings on behalf of the Vincent Hosang Family Foundation. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Great to be in your midst again for another launch. It's always exciting when I come to the University of the West Indies. I remember growing up in, um, Manchester, Jamaica, of course, and um, I've always wanted to be at the UWI for whatever reason, but I would only see that on television. And uh, when I was able to get the required subjects to attend the UWI, my parents could not afford that. So it is indeed a blessing to be here now speaking in this form. So I thank you for the opportunity. I bring greetings on behalf of the Vincent Hosang Family Foundation and um, Mrs. Hosang, the matriarch of the family, she's still not doing well, so we ask that you keep her in your prayers. It's very important, difficult time for the Hosang family, but we continue to press on with God's help. He brings you his love, and he is truly expecting another inspiring year this year with what's to come from the students. We know that you always do your best, and you put out all that you have to win, and it's going to be even keener this year. So um, we see what happens with that. Our support for the program is more robust than ever. And I must add that we were truly inspired in August when we invited the winning team for 2016 to participate in a tour of the Jamaican diaspora community in New York. The tour was valued at some 10,000 US dollars was a five-night, six-day visit. And the team saw diaspora businesses, Caribbean food delights, VP records, Ford Auto Mall, Mamonides Women's Center, the Garvey School, and some other Jamaican businesses from the Queens, Brooklyn, and Bronx area in New York, as well as Rutherford in New Jersey. In addition to that, we added some mainstream feel to it. They had a wonderful time at the CBS studios in Manhattan. They toured different radio stations, including 1010 Winds, CBS FM, WFA, and you should see them at the microphone. I'm not sure if there are pictures here tonight. Are there pictures? There, there might be something in store for you to see what, um, what they enjoyed and how they went about doing what they did. It was really, really a fantastic time. And we just can't thank you enough, uh, Doug and the rest of the team, for just being supportive and just giving of your best of the UEVC program. So again, I'm not gonna hold it up. It's raining outside. All I'm gonna say is thank you. Keep on praying and supporting one another because that's what we have to do. No man is an island, no man stands alone. Have a good night and thank you. Thank you, Janice. And I should add, I mean, she speaks about the, the trip in New York, but she was a consummate hostess. And so we also want to publicly express our thanks to you. She was a tour guide and hostess and everything. So thank you very much, Janice, for that. At this time, we want to ask one of the students who a past winner, and in fact, we have the winner from last year, O'Shane Crary, 
we'll ask him to come and just talk about the experience he had as part of the program and a little about what he's doing now, having graduated from the program a year ago. O'Shane's teammate, Peter Gay, is also here, but O'Shane will, will speak on behalf of the team. So for those of you guys who don't know, I'm O'Shane Crary, once again, 2016 winner of the competition. Uh, I finished my undergraduate degree and I'm currently still in school pursuing my master's in computer-based management information system. So I'm just going to talk about how the experience has been thus far. So for me, winning the Vincent Hozang Venture Competition was about more than just the prize money and bragging rights. As it made a difference between starting a business or not. The Vincent Hozang UWE Venture Competition provides a unique opportunity for students to put entrepreneurship principles and practices into play while at the same time fostering an integrative learning experience. Whether you want to be a, a winner of one of the prizes or whether you go on to implement your proposed new idea, or whether you just simply want to take advantage of the learning experience and apply it later in your career, I guarantee you that this competition will be an exciting, challenging, and very rewarding opportunity for you to do so. As this competition provides a unique way to push your business to new heights, and aside from the accolades of winning the competition, or the opportunity to go to New York, or even the privilege of enjoying the luxurious stay at the Beldevoir Hotel, which I cannot pronounce up to this day. <laughs> what else can you expect to gain from the competition? One obvious but yet hugely beneficial benefit was that of being promoted across a ton of mainstream and social media platforms. Yes. But apart from that, there was also a more surprising benefit. What I thought was going to be an incredible holiday, in fact, turned out to be a truly inspiring and insightful journey of constant networking with a group of really impressive, impressive entrepreneurs and mentors. I've come a long way, totally inspired, having gained so many insights into ways I can build the business further. And not only that, but I have built great friendships with other entrepreneurs. All this happened just by making the simple decision of signing up for the, UA, the Vincent Hosang UA Venture Competition. Guys, I'm telling you, if you enter this competition, you have nothing to lose. This experience has taught me and the other entrepreneurs that anyone Anyone with a dream, commitment, and perseverance can create a successful business. Every person I have met during and after the competition have had valuable advice to offer. And if there's one lesson I could take away from all this, it's that a community or support system or a competition such as this one can truly empower anybody from any walk of life to create the life and the business they dream of. You see, when I won this competition, I had no idea what I was in store for. The opportunity to be around some of the smartest people you'll ever meet who have helped to shift our company vision into something that actually makes sense. I left each mentorship session with actual tactical advice and a major understanding of product and company strategy, which have now enabled me to simplify my business, business model. And it's all thanks to the Vincent Hozang family and foundation and the Mona School of Business Management family and all the sponsors, partners, and supporters, and of course, the well-wishers of the competition. The chemistry that this competition has created between me, the entrepreneurs, and all the other parties who are part of this ecosystem is just simply amazing. I have learned so much about business, myself, and what it means to be an entrepreneur. The advices and insights you receive from the mentors far exceed what you could read in any blog or any book. 
and having the chance to share ideas with so many brilliant, like-minded people is something you don't get the chance to experience very often outside of this ecosystem. Now, my question to you entrepreneurs is, are you ready to join the ranks of all the successful entrepreneurs who have passed through the Vincent Hosang U Venture Competition? I didn't hear any answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and are you ready to gain the entrepreneurial experience of a lifetime? Well, if yes, then this is your opportunity to spend some time with other startups just like you who are facing many of the same challenges and the same victories that you are facing. And it's also your chance to be paired with a group of all-star me mentors. And I must say, this could also be your chance to form a cohort of lifelong business partners and friends. But, of course, it's not going to be easy. It means you have to come up with an idea. And if you've already got one, then it's time to start selling that idea. And if you're already selling your idea, then it's time to put 10 times as much effort to ensure you secure your spot for this year's entrepreneurial opportunity of a lifetime. Vincent Hosang, University of the West Indies Venture Competition. Thank you. <laughs> and also, just to, on behalf of my team, just to show my appreciation, we actually brought some goodies or prize, whatever you want to classify it as, which I will now give to the Vincent Hosang Foundation. So I'll just invite Miss Janice to come up. in New York, taking us around some places I've never been before, meeting a lot of wonderful people, and of course, seeing the Trump Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all of that, sir. This is our appreciation. It's not enough, but it oh. says a lot. You should really tell about the nightlife too, right? <laughs> <laughs> And I have one more for the UE, MSBM. I'm not sure who's going to collect that one. You want to come and collect it, Miss Shani? So again, also, thank you for the opportunity that this competition has given me, academically, outside of academic, of course, business as well. It was very, very, very rewarding and well, well received. Thank you for all of that. Well, he said it all, salesman himself, and I mean, I think those of us who met Oshane at the beginning and hear him now can see and feel and acknowledge the transformation, and um, that, that's what the program does. So thank you very much, O'Shane, for expressing yourself as well as you did, for representing the school and the competition as well as you do, did and continue to do, and for being thoughtful enough to, to express thanks to us as well. Thank you very much, O'Shane. So now we come to that point in the program where we hear from our sponsors, and again, it, 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 it's never too much for us to keep on repeating how much we appreciate this, the, the partnership, the, and it's not just about you know, the offering of money, but the investment in the students, investment in the program, the investment in MSBM as an institution. So we'll invite first the oldster, well, not the person, but the company. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Joan Dunction Foundation has been around for, for, for five years, and we are so, the oldster company, not the oldster representative. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> well, Pat Patricia, we, we know you and I are the same age. So, um, <laughs> and um, we following which we'll have Mr. Nari William Singh representing the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority, who is coming on for the first time. 
And again, we just want to say thanks and welcome to the MSBM UE Vincent Osang family. And we are sure that you will, it, you'll find the, the, the experience with all of us beneficial and that we too pledge that we will support you as much as well. So we'll have first the, the Joan Duncan Foundation who has been with us for a while. And again, we, we really appreciate that. And welcome to Mr. Nari Williams Singh as he comes. Thank you. Pat. Well, yes. Good evening. I just want you all to judge for yourself, OK? Because if I'm the oldster and Nari is the youngster, I want you to look at Nari's hair and look at my hair. And do you agree or not? <laughs> All right, we are not going to have to answer the question openly. <laughs> no. All right, but you know, we can accept the title of Ulster as a, sponsor, as a sponsor because we are happy to be Ulster's sponsors, to have been associated with this competition for um, maybe what, how long after it started? Oh, three years after it started? Four years. Last five years. Five years, a long time. But um, first of all, let me acknowledge everybody, right? Because plenty important people in here, right? You have Dougie, you have Jimmy there, you have, of course, Janice, and you have, of course, um, <coughs> the two Janice, Janice Julian and Janice Hamlin. And Janice, who next time I'm going to come on the New York trip so I can get a gift as well, Oshin. <laughs> uh, whoever is going on the New York trip, okay? All right, no, but, and of course the students, most important people here. And of course my team supporting me right now, Kim and Keanu. And Patricia, Patricia, where Patricia gone? Where is her here? Thank you. So, you know, the Vincent Hosang UA Venture competition. Been around for a while and, uh, and really has, is an important part of, and I want to use, you know, I noticed that Oshin the from Pure Ecosystem, Ecosystem, yes. yes? Important part of the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Jamaica. Because we have decided as a country that it is the growth of our small and medium enterprises that's going to cause us to win. And that starts from the very beginning. And uh, what was very heartwarming for me the other day, I was with a group of youths in my other life, because I just also want to know that I'm a young politician, <laughs> but an old star in sponsorship, right? <laughs> so in my other life, I was with a group of youths not as fortunate as O'Shane and the others here to have gone to university. But when I said to them, what is it that you want to be in life, right? And you know, I said, who wants to be a doctor? One person put up their hand. They were like just coming out of high school. Who wants to be a lawyer? One person put up their hand, right? And then you went to a few other professions and you said, who wants to be an entrepreneur? 90% of the people in the room put up their hand. So we have gotten something right. We have instilled that desire to want to create businesses in Jamaica. This is a good thing. One time people have said, no man, but you must want to get a job. But we are actually getting the result that we wanted to get. People want to start businesses. However, they can't just want to start a business. They need the guidance. And a competition like this provides that guidance in a very practical way, right? And uh, so I want to commend the designers of this competition. I think Doggy are a big part of the original design and the continued um, evolution of the design. I really want to big you up for that. Because when you start, you can clap him. It's a good thing to clap him. <laughs> I'm sure when you started, it was not as obvious to everybody else as it was to you, you know? And to stick to something is important, like, like something like this, that it's not obvious to everybody else, 
But when you stick with it, all, all of a sudden everybody says, oh, of course, we must have a competition. And yes, of course, we must sponsor that competition, right? Because you have to have that vision. So you have to take that away with you as well as young entrepreneurs as you come up with your ideas. Your ideas will not seem as obvious to everybody else when you start it. In fact, when JMB was started, most of the bankers in Jamaica were laughing after my mother. All right? When she started JMB, because she said, What you really do? Uh, until they, like, they kind of dismissed it. Until when, she had ten, when, until when we had 10,000 clients, they said, oh, What she really do? <laughs> and then we had 25,000 clients, they said, We have to buy her, buy that company. You understand? And so it progressed. And they're still trying to buy it. So, and that's a good thing. You want to want to be bought because that means there is value and other people see value in you, right? If nobody wants to buy you, think again. You're not attractive enough, okay? You have to remember this all the time. And I want to also just celebrate Vincent Hosang in this process here as visionary is taking the lead and keeping this thing going. Um, in an interview that he did last year, I, or this earlier this year, it, yeah? I'm not sure if it was on profile, it was, it was reported in a newspaper. And he said, you know, when asked what are one of the most important things that you must do uh, in, in business, and he says, treat your employees like family. Pay them well and give them good benefits. It's a value that we share at GMMB. If you remember, being in business is about the people that you are in business with. Because life is about your relationships, it's how we relate to each other as human, in our humanness. And that's why we build our company on a vision of love. Because it's about our interrelatedness. That's going to cause us to have the ability, of course, to create the profit. All right, so I just want to say thank you again for the opportunities, an opportunity that we cherish and that we will continue to um, take advantage of as long as we are allowed to. Thank you very much. Thank you for those comments, Pat. As a newbie, I have some prepared comments, so, but maybe <laughs> after a few years, then I'll be able to just speak um, from the hip. Master of Ceremonies, Ms. Janice Henlin, Acting Executive Director, Mr. Michael Williams, Mr. Douglas Lindo, Advisor for the Vincent Hosang UA Venture Competition, Mrs. Ashley Rose Davies, Vincent Hosang Entre Entrepreneurship Program Coordinator, Ms. Uh, Janice Julian, Marketing and Public Relations Manager. Other event partners, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. The Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority is proud to be the main sponsor and partner of the 2017 Vincent Hosang University of the West Indies Venture Competition, which is being staged by the University of the West Indies Mona School of Business and Management. As a Civil Aviation Authority, the JCA understands that while our focus is obviously skyward. Progress has to be achieved from the ground up. Indeed, given the dynamic and technologically driven nature of aviation, a strategic goal of the JCAA is operational efficiency, capacity building, and innovation. Second only to safety and security, these values have been identified as critical for our sustainability. As good corporate citizens, we all know that we share a responsibility both as individuals and as organizations to support, nurture the nation's youth as a primary source of regeneration, progress, hope, and new possibilities. I must further state that while altruism is certainly a wonderful attribute and we would all like to accept all the glory it brings, it is important to declare that from the authorities' perspective, sponsorship of this competition has a direct benefit to the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority. We're really happy to advise that a noteworthy portion of the intellectual capital, which has made JCAA a leading civil aviation authority within the region 
and worldwide has stemmed from recruitment of talented graduates of UE. This recruitment, thankfully, has been a stroke of luck and not of lightning. <laughs> as, as corporate sponsors, and in particular, custodians and essential service providers in the aviation industry, we know that growth and progress never happen by chance. Instead, they are the direct result of forces working together. When we look at important initiatives, such as this initiative, the choice is always clear. We choose to build together and succeed together. It is truly the belief of the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority that the Vincent Hosang UA Venture Competition is a strategic initiative that will create sustainable and long-term paths for increasing the operational efficiency of various organizations as we continuously strengthen our skills, resources, and processes in order to meet the demands of the global, regional, and national industries. The case in the aviation industry is even more urgent as we prepare as a nation for the significant growth in air transport, which is forecasted for our industry over the coming decades. The JCA congratulates the Mona School of Business and Management and its principles for the continuation and strengthening of a value-adding and strategic initiative, which is exposing and expressing the creativity and innovation of spirit, which are all needed to support the government's coordinated focus on nation building. The JCA looks forward to the mentoring opportunities that will be created through this venture competition, as it supports the development of adaptable but innovative and value-adding graduates and citizens. To this end, we encourage members of the university community across all faculties and disciplines to expose their talents and skills as they harness and demonstrate the most innovative, game-changing, and successful business ideas. As Jamaica's air transport regulator and air navigation provider, we can attest that travel, whether in the mind or any other form, has many benefits. Only when you travel do you really meet yourself. So travel and let your ideas change you. For those in the audience who have not yet been motivated to join the competition because perhaps you don't have a business idea as yet, I encourage you to remain focused because you have it in you. Remember, business ideas and opportunities are just like buses and airplanes. There's always another one coming, that is if you're there to meet it. I also use this medium to remind each student or prospective entrant that your life has a purpose and your story is important. Make your dreams count and your voice matter. You were born to make an impact and this could be one of your greatest opportunities along the way to fulfilling your life's purpose and achieving that impact. Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority thanks the Mona School of Business and Management again for this great opportunity to partner with this venture. To the competitors and prospective entrants, I say, don't ever be afraid to be odd, because in the law of numerals, you have to be odd to be number one. We extend our best wishes, wishes for a successful event as we work together to build a stronger, more competitive, and more prosperous Jamaica. We look forward to a fruitful partnership and judging on some of the results that we have been exposed to so far, we congratulate all who have participated in a wonderful venture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. William Singh. And just to, to play on the, the lightning analogy a little, I hope that as it, as it relates to your participation in the competition, lightning will strike in the same place again oh, next right. year. <laughs> you know. Here, here. here. <laughs> that you will, you will be so motivated to come back and support us. But thank you very much for, for those words and um, for the obvious commitment on, on the part of the company and the investment in our, our students and, and in our young people in Jamaica in general. So we welcome you and thank you as well. So again, let me just use the opportunity to mention the partners. We have the, the Vincent Hosang Family Foundation and Caribbean Food Delights. 
we have our platinum sponsors, the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority and the Joan Duncan Foundation. Other sponsors, we have Returning, the Development Bank of Jamaica. They have been with us for a number of years. The Mona Business Support Services as well, a number of years. This year, for the first time, Ingenuity and the Jamaica Biscuit Company through the brand Excelsior. So please give a round of applause again for the, for, for the partnerships that, that we have. So before we move to the questions and answers, we were to have had Mr. Kadim Petgrave with us. He just arrived. Kadim is a participant or was a participant in the 2014 competition. And he's also a young leader of the America's Initiative Fellow, part of the inaugural group. You'll remember when President Obama was here, he announced that program. And Kadim was one of the first persons to participate in that program. And the business educators continues to grow. We are extremely proud of the group. And so we've asked him to come and just share as well with us. Kadim. Greetings, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here again. Thanks for having me. So today I'm here to share the educator's experience during and after the Vincent Hosang UWI Venture Competition. Now, some of you were here a year ago when I said that our experience was a rotted one. I said some other things, things I'll speak on later, but rotted, I do believe rotted was the right word. Simply because it wasn't good, it wasn't bad, it was very rotted. Rotted in all caps, by the way. If you can read the phone, you see it's, it, it's in all caps. So let me walk you through our experience real quick. Because I really want to focus on our post-competition experience versus the experience during it. Because it's no secret that our benefits came after the competition. And please pay attention, especially if you're a contestant or a sponsor, please pay attention. So the competition itself, it acted as a refinery for educators. It was 2014. We had a 100-page business plan and a team of five. To prep for pitch day, we attended boot camp sessions. My personal favorite was the business plan boot camp, simply because prior to that, I didn't know that a plan could only be 10 pages long. <laughs> Excellent sessions, by the way. Excellent sessions. Another thing that happened before pitch day was us learning a very valuable lesson. Simply that some friends should just remain friends, not business partners. Or as we like to say, some friends, you leave them at the domino table. Anyway, the pitch day came and we delivered. We made it past the eliminations. We pitched again in the finals, but we didn't make the top three. Mr. Lindo. Auntie Dawn, where is Auntie Dawn? I hope you noticed I didn't say we lost or we didn't win. Good? All right. Our win was delayed. Our blessings came later. People, with the Vincent Hosang Venture Competition, nobody is a loser. And the educators post-competition experience can and will attest to that. For example, last year on this very stage, I said that the Vincent Hosang UA Venture Competition is more than a competition. It is, in essence, a support system. You, the contestants, have much more to gain than just prize money. I even poked fun at Mr. Lindo and others by saying that Simir and I can't speak about prize money because we'll never get none. <laughs> well, let the record show that last year's joke is now dead because the support system saw it fit after two years to bless us with a grant that carries the weight of prize money, money that we are now putting to good use, by the way, to create tour packages that we'll be selling later on to earn money from it. Because in business, you have to make money. Last year, I mentioned a few names, like Raman McLaren, Auntie Dawn, Jimmy Masalaman, Janice Henlin, members of the support system who we have grown closer to. The connection with each person runs deeper now. In fact, Uncle Dougie and Raman, is Raman here, was here with us in December, prepping 
for this year, we had a strategic plan and we went through it right here at UWE in the holidays when everybody is drinking sorrel and eating cake. Also, as was said earlier, when I was here presenting, I was actually a month away from traveling to the US after being selected for President Obama's Young Leaders of the Americas initiative, which was a big deal since educators was chosen from over 4,000 applicants in Latin America and the Caribbean. I did well on the program, by the way. I learned a lot, I learned lessons that we are now applying to our business, things like training tour guides, writing scripts and all of that. And I won a pitch, I run a pitch competition in real time, by the way, it wasn't delayed. I pitched 1.30 and by two o'clock I was the winner. And I think the Vincent Hosang pitch competition prepared me for that pitch as well. It was in the Miami Herald and all of that, and it felt good. Also on the Obama program, we also secured a big business partner in Miami. We're looking forward to what that partnership will bring. This year, fresh from the Obama program, I'm also a month away from traveling to the United States. This time, by invitation, I didn't apply. I was invited by the Obama Foundation to participate in, a, in the Obama Summit. It's a meeting for civic leaders from around the globe. So again, I'm very honored and excited. Yeah. So in case anybody here is wondering, what have we been up to since we spoke here last year, since we participated in 2014, let me just point out five things. Number one, last year when I was away, Simir, there he is, the Rasta man. Sir, hold up your hand, Simir. When I was away last year, he executed one of our tours in Falmouth. The JN Foundation and the UCM Bolt Foundation were having a charity run. It's on this year as well. We, in a sense, make tours fun by allowing you to use a mobile app while on tour. So it's not virtual, you're actually there doing it. Last year, while people were walking the route, they were actually answering questions and doing challenges that we created. And Simir executed that when I was away. Last year, when I spoke, we were at just over 1,000 students having done our tours, you know? We are now way past the 2,000 mark. This year, we also partnered by request with the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information to make math fun. So right here at the University of the West Indies, if you're familiar with the campus, you know Nardo Stahl, you know KFC, you know the JN Bank, we had kids running around with tablets, doing challenges, answering questions, and realizing that math can be fun. So that's where we are now. Number four, we have managed to raise three million Jamaican dollars in grant funding from the Digicel Foundation, the DBJ, the JN Foundation, the USAID, and of course the Vincent Hosang Incubation Program. That's where the grant with the weight came from, by the way. Number five, we are a few months away from launching our mobile app. So I actually spoke to Mr. Hosang two years ago, and when I told him about the idea, he expressed that he doesn't like that Jamaicans consume a lot of technology. He feels that we should produce it. So it's good to know that we are months away from launching our mobile app. You'll all be able to download it, buy a tour, to, well, do a tour. First five tours will be free. You'll be able to visit Devon House, Port Royal, where else? Bunkers Hill, National Heroes Park, and all of that. Six, Uncle Jimmy, where are you? Yes, the big business partner that you set us up with last year. It's in the pot stirring. It's soon ready, you know? Yeah. In closing from the heart, as usual. I want to say thank you to the Vincent Host and UWI Venture Competition for being a refinery. It was three months after pitching that we launched our business right here at the MBSS, Mona Business Support Services, AKA the UA Incubator. We launched from there. And it's clear that you people are serious about entrepreneurship. As Uncle Dougie always tells me, that we're building a what? What are we building? Is it a wagon? He keeps saying that we're building a wagon and you have to put the parts in place and test it so you can have everything running. So people come and say, help me, I need money, I need this, I need that. It's a process. Um, I just want to say bless up and thanks again for having me. And you are in good hands, all the contestants. Yeah. up to the rest of youth <coughs> but um kadim is always we've always been proud you know of what the two rasta men have been able to do and continue to do and um they're but one of the many 
We have Neville there, who is a lamb man. And at the end of the, once we, this session is finished, I hope that we interact with some of these past winners and you know, prospective students, because it's more than an academic exercise. It's really real business. And we are so pleased when we see the, the fruits of the label. I want to introduce properly and publicly Ashley Rose Davis. Ashley, come up front, please. Ashley is the new, <laughs> newly installed coordinator for the Vincent Hosang Venture Competition well, program. And Ashley joined us on the 1st of September and jumped in feet first and managed to put together all of this. And, 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 and more, very importantly, Ashley has been around the campus personally promoting the, the program coordinated several meetings with heads of departments and has injected new life and vitality and we really appreciate that. So Ashley will be the face of the, the program from here on. MSBM yes, sir, we're proud to say that as well and, and connected to MSBM in, in many ways. So Ashley, just want to introduce you to everyone and publicly welcome you and thank you for what you've done so far and look forward to, to much more thank from you. you. Okay. And then Dawn Morgan, Ashley has kind of taken over from Dawn. Everybody would have known Dawn over the last couple of years. So let us also publicly <laughs> express our thanks to Dawn for, for taking the program to where it, it is at the moment too. And Dawn has again too jumped into the program feet first, kind of just had to fill a need at a time, but really gave it her all very organized and detail oriented and, and committed, you know, here till late hours of night. And so publicly we say thanks to Dawn for your service up to this point. Not that she's leaving, but but she'll be Ashley will be up front and Dawn will be supporting her. So we have a better team and a larger team now. So thank you very much, Dawn. At this point we'll ask for questions. There might be students who might want to ask any questions, sponsors who want to ask questions, or faculty members. So we'll have that session now and then at the end of this we have some refreshment outside. We ask you to join us. We promised you we won't be long because we're aware of the mess outside in terms of traffic and the weather. But we think that we've had a a good evening and I'm saying thanks as well to the, the technical support team who are always here to support us. Thanks to those who planned the event, Dawn and Ashley again. Thank you especially for coming because you know as you can see many people chose not to come so we don't take it for granted that you're here. Thanks again and also we thank the sponsors. We can't say that too often we say special thanks to Janice Julian for traveling down and supporting us in person. And we ask that on our behalf you convey to Mr. Hosang our sincere compassion and you know we love that we send in terms of um, Mrs. Hosang, as you heard, is not well. And so we, we send our prayers and best wishes and um, hope that she will recover speedily. So please, please convey that on our behalf. He would have been here, I'm sure, too, were it not for that. So we, we, we acknowledge that. So we, those are the thanks, but we, let's have questions. Um, we're here to answer any questions you may have about the, the competition. Good evening, everyone. Yes, please use the mic and just introduce yourself. Thank you. Okay. Let me congratulate all the participants in the competition, sponsor, coordinator, students. It seems as if it has been a very wonderful journey so far. I am very interested in entering the competition. However, this question is perhaps to the competitors, past competitors. My team members, or my group members, they are a bit timid and concerned about the competition taken away from their study time and academic performance. So I just want to ask what advice could you give 
um, having been there, how did it impact you as a student and being very involved in this competition? What advice do you have to give? Neville, perhaps you want me to take that? Neville did his MBA <laughs> as well. Um, Oshane was in undergrad, yet, so let, let's ask Neville first. And while you're at it, tell us a little about what you're doing too. So to answer the question, um, it is growing, the competition is growing, and, and, and not for that, but it does teach you, the benefits far outweigh what you lose in terms of time. Um, Okay, I hope that, that helps. I mean, I suppose <coughs> much of what he's saying, it has to do with time management, you know? It has to do with that, and that, that's gonna be key. That, that's gonna be key, how you properly balance the time. So this is a concentrated period, you know, the application's open, we go through the boot camps, the competition has the finals. So it's tight at that point, but the key is to understand your own schedule, your own capacities, your own motivations, and then hopefully as a team you work together to help each, each other as well. Dougie, you perhaps want to say yeah, something? I'll just make one quick comment before. Um, Oshane says something. You know, I, I share this with young people all the time. When you go for a job, People don't ask you how many A's you got in how many subjects you did, whether you're undergrad or a graduate program. They really want to understand what you bring to the table when you get in through the doors. I've had people in government, I've had people for large corporate Jamaica, and I've had people from my company. I look at what you, your degree from UE, from UTEC, I want to know what capacity you bring day one, hour one, minute one. What this program allows you to do, not only manage time, but to build your entrepreneurial capacity, even if you work for somebody else. So what's interesting out of the program is that much of our alumni have not started businesses, but they've been able to go into other organizations and become what you call corporate entrepreneurs, and in fact have been significant contributors and leaders in the organizations in which they work. So the benefits, I mean, I can't sell it hard enough, outweigh the costs, but I don't think there's any one of your colleagues, or Shane, maybe you could share um, from the undergrad uh, perspective that you'll be on the downside. Yeah, so it all comes down to time management, that's one. But um, you also mentioned that you have a team so that's where the team come in as well. So probably you can go one evening to the sessions, then a team member could fill in. But during my speech, I also mentioned, of course, it's going to be challenging, and that is a part of the entrepreneurial process. If it's easy, then it's not worth it. There has to be some challenge within it, and that is what helps to show the true entrepreneurial, the true entrepreneurial spirit within that individual, or in this case, you. And separate and apart from this, I noticed Kadim spoke about some of his success after the competition. I have some as well, which I did not mention. I just mentioned them now. After the competition, I won the, what's it again? The UE Gill JN competition, that was 300,000. In terms of sales or business-wise, we've lent over a million dollars thus far to over 100 consumers. Ah, uh, what else is there? There's so much things. <laughs> Just think, think, there's something else, there's something else. Ah, Peter Gay, 
Hmm? The stock exchange, we play second in that as well. We're in the media. What else? A lot of things. So it all started here, and we have accomplished stuff as well. So I just wanted to point that out. You finish your degree? No. Well, I finished my undergraduate degree, and I'm now currently a master's student while pushing my business. So imagine that. I don't have any time, and I'm still doing all of this. So from I can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. Okay. Th thank you very much, Oshin. I think we have another question. Good night, everyone. Good night. Before I ask my question, I'm going to express gratitude to all the students and staff that have been So that's a great question, and I'm, you know, I'm happy for that question because it, it, it weighs on the mind of most young people, whether here at UE, UTech, or NCU. It's a big issue for young people, and it comes back to that issue of trust. So let me start. I, I have a two-part answer. One is, in the seven years I've been associated with this program, we've never had one incident of someone's idea being taken or stolen. We Point number two, we can't guarantee it. In fact, I'll go one step further. At the global competitions that I participated in, which are some of the top competitions, they give you no guarantee whatsoever that they can indemnify you against it. Now, a, an important part of the program, in a, especially in our boot camp, is we go through protecting IP, right? And that becomes an important part of what the student team must do in terms of protecting their idea. But you know what I have to tell you this evening? The biggest deficit is, doesn't come from people stealing people's ideas, is the courage to act. I've taught over 1,000 students at Mona School of Business and Management, and I've had heard too many times, you know I had that idea? I said, where's your courage to act? The deficit isn't on people taking other people's ideas or damage created there. It's, listen, it's making that courageous step, which I know is tough. Trust me, when I left my bed this morning, I had a plan A, and I was on plan Z by nine o'clock. <laughs> A.M., right? It takes a lot of fortitude. So that's encouragement. We have the IP, um, part of the boot camp. We teach you about IP and what you need to do, but even after IP, you have to defend IP to you know. Because when somebody steals the idea, you better pack it, better stick to be able to hire a lawyer to defend it, right? But you know what, what is truly rare is people who have the courage to act and to see things through from the inspiration onto the perspiration. So don't worry about it. Okay. Go for My it. My other question is the first place, and first place, sorry, and the second place, and third place, monetary price position, is it to fund our start up the business per se? It's a great question, right? And it's one that comes up from, you must be an A student. <laughs> Let us ask all the right questions. I am an MSc, um, MSc accounting student. I guess I'm an A student. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, as far as our competition rules, 
very honestly, there are no conditions. If you want to take your $300,000 and go buy a new pair of shoes, you go and do it, right? <laughs> now, that rule doesn't apply to some of the other competitions that we are participating, but we've always had the philosophy that if we try to legislate from day one how um, people spend their prize money, it, it's going to take us off track. We, we, every year I say, I'd rather have 10 willing entrepreneurs than 100 entrants who are not really serious. And ultimately, I don't think there's, there, there, there I think are one or two examples, but in the main, most individuals plow that money back into the business in some way, shape, or form. Even from the point of view of exposure, exposing themselves. The, the $200,000, the 300000 will never be enough. It's a passion that you bring to the table. One of the things I, I will point out um, as well, our most successful alumni are not first place winners today. Do you know that? Most of our successful alumni of this program are not first place winners. The individuals who came second, third, who did you make the final round? Right, Reggie? <laughs> <laughs> but it's that resilience. It's that keeping your eye on the prize, that vision and that stick to itiveness that really is going to define you going forward. And this may very well be the last question. And I, I, I want to highlight here that the individuals who have been a part of bringing this program to life, both our partners and our small committee of volunteers have been here year after year after year because of the perspiration and commitment of the young entrepreneurs who have been a part of this program. I, I share this with you, young lady. No one, Don Morgan, Janice Henley, Jim Masalaman, no one and keep Ramon McCarran are paid to do it. We all show up because we believe in you. Next question. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. And those were thought provoking questions and we encourage that. I know a number of students have been in touch with Ashley, sending emails asking questions and um, you know, pity some of them are not here, but it has been very, very encouraging to see the kind of interest that people have. So we welcome questions, all kinds of questions. That's how you will learn. Any further questions? I think we have to wrap it now. So once again, it's just left for me to say a big thank you to all who have come. Thank you again to our sponsors. Thank you to our faculty members. Thank you to the students who have come. And we look forward to another great year together. So please join us outside for some refreshment now. Thank you. I just want to show you, this is a bottle of Pelican Pure Water, a UA product out of our incubator, bottled water. Carl, you want to do some photos?